Guess what? This lesson is all about conversational phrases in American English. And maybe you're wondering, can I find a lesson like this in a book? Not exactly. How come? You may ask. How come indeed? Let's check it out. Welcome to another Happy English Podcast coming to you from New York City. And here's your English teacher, Michael. All right. Thank you, John. And thanks, everyone. It's Michael here from Happy English, and I help people speak English better. This is Happy English Podcast, episode 707 American Conversational Phrases. For this English lesson, I'm going to show you how to sound more American by using words and phrases that will make your English conversation sound, well, less like a textbook. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to use and understand this English. Let's dive in. The first one is, guess what? We use, guess what? To let the other person know that we have some news or other new information. The response to guess what is usually what or I don't know what. Here are some examples. Hey, Joey, guess what? Uh, what? I met a nice guy at a party last night. Hey, Joey, guess what? I don't know what. I've decided to go to night school. Hey, Joey, guess what? What? I'm off tomorrow. Sometimes the response to, guess what, is your guess. In other words, when you hear guess what, you may try to guess what the other person's news is. Hey, Joey, guess what? Let me guess. You have a new boyfriend. How did you know? Jack told me. Hey, Joey, guess what? Uh, you have a new boyfriend? Not exactly, but I did meet a nice guy at a party last night. That's awesome. The next conversational phrase is not exactly. We use not exactly when we want to softly or indirectly tell someone they're wrong. In situations like this, Americans tend to speak in an indirect way. Not exactly is a good phrase for doing that. For example, Hey Joey, I heard you were going to start your own business. Not exactly, but I'm just thinking about doing something new. Hey, Joey, are your kids going to go to summer camp again this year? Not exactly. They're having summer camps online this year. Let me ask you something. Is the company going to lay off anyone? Not exactly. It seems like they're just going to cut people's hours. Does that make sense? In the previous example, Jack said, does that make sense? This phrase, does that make sense, is a conversational way to say, do you understand? Parents usually use, do you understand, when they scold their children. A boss or manager will use, do you understand, when they scold an employee. Sounds heavy, right? Does that make sense, is less direct and a more conversational way to check understanding. Let's look at some examples. When you want to add numbers in Excel, just highlight the cells and click this button. Does that make sense? Ah, makes sense. Thanks. It's easy to get to the library from here. Just take the M3 or M4 bus and get off at 42nd Street. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Thanks. After you put the cash in the ATM, the machine will verify the amount for you. And then if it's OK, just click OK. Does that make sense? Sorry, I don't get it. Shouldn't I put the cash in an envelope first? No, you don't have to. How come? How come? How come is a casual way of asking why. Sometimes why can sound too direct or strong. So in conversations, we prefer to use how come. For example... I'm not going to the party tomorrow. Oh, no. How come? I just found out I have to go to a meeting tomorrow night. I don't want to go to that restaurant. How come? Because the last time I was there, the service was lousy. We can also use how come when we form a question. And it's easy, too. You just put how come in front of a sentence. 
Here are some examples. How come you're not going to the party tomorrow? I just found out I have to go to a meeting tomorrow night. How come you don't want to go to that restaurant? Because the last time I was there, the service was lousy. The next one is, you bet. We use, you bet, to mean sure or yes as a conversational response to a yes or no question or a statement. Let's look at some examples. You want to go to the diner? You bet. Are you ready for your vacation? You bet. Ah, oh, this pizza is good. You bet. The next one is gotcha. Gotcha is the casual conversational pronunciation of I got what you said. 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 Got, got, gotcha. Gotcha means I understand. Here are some examples. Just go straight down 5th and turn left on 42nd. Gotcha. Press the power button for 10 seconds and restart the PC. Gotcha. When you make tea, take out the tea bag before adding the milk. Gotcha. The next one is, I blew it. When you blow something, you make a mistake with that thing. I blew it means, I made a mistake or I messed that up. For example, How did you do on the interview? I blew it. Did you have fun on your blind date? Nah, I totally blew it. How was your math exam? I think I blew it. The last one for today is, it's up to you. We use, it's up to you, when we want to tell someone that they can decide what to do. It's up to you means you can decide. Let's look at some examples. Should we go to the park or down to the beach? It's up to you. What do you want to watch on Netflix? I don't know. It's up to you. What kind of pizza do you want to order? Oh, it's up to you. Keep in mind, the best way to remember this and any vocabulary is to take the word or phrase, write it in a sentence that's true for you or true in your world, and then memorize your sentences. Guess what? That's it for this English Lesson Podcast. By the way, if you'd like to get more practice using your English, why don't you join my podcast learner study group? There, you can make new friends, join me for live group coaching every week, plus get the PDF transcript and audio download for every Happy English podcast in the past and in the future. And... Each episode has exercises where you can practice this English point with speaking and writing checked by me. To learn more or to see some of the example sentences from this lesson, just visit myhappyenglish.com and choose Podcast Lesson 707. Remember, learning another language is not easy, but it's not impossible, and I'm here to help you on your journey. This podcast was brought to you by Happy English. Please visit myhappyenglish.com. Show your support for Happy English by leaving us a review. Get English. Get happy. Happy English.